Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and I am here today to show you how you can make your own custom stencils using stamps and their coordinating dies. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to make and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. A couple weeks ago, Not Too Shabby came out with a fun Halloween mini bundle called Spooky Sweet, and I did a project share of the cards that you see up on screen now. I asked you during that video if you would like to see any of the techniques from the cards, and there were a couple. The first one I did was yesterday, and I showed you how to make a galaxy background using the Wacky Web Stencil. And today, I'm going to be showing you how I kind of made my own background pattern paper using stamps from the set and the coordinating dies to create my own stencil. If you look closely, around each of the stamps is a little halo of color, and I did that with my own stencil. Today's card will look a little different, and you might not have this specific kit, but you can apply this to stamps and coordinating dies that you might already have in your stash. Even though today's card is not going to look the same as the original, I will be using the same stamps and coordinating dies. And that is the Spooky Sweet set from Not Too Shabby and the coordinating dies, which have dies for all of the images and the sentiments. Now, as of recording time, there was one or two of these left, so I will link it in that description box below if you want to check it out and see if you can still grab yourself one. Now, while you're there, also in the description box is a 10% off coupon code that is good for most items in the store. Not only do they sell their own products, but they sell a wide variety of popular brands as well. As I get started with the process, I will let you know about other tools and products that I bring in. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on my stencil, I cut a piece of cardstock to 6x6. Six six. Now this is bigger than the card front we'll be stenciling onto, but you want to make sure that you're going to have room for the die cut pieces to fall or bleed off the edge of your stenciled piece. I chose the three dies from the coordinating die set. It is all of the candies and I'm going to start by putting them in the upper left hand corner like I would like them arranged on the final piece. I try to do a triangle of sorts and once I have those placed together I'm going to get a piece of painters tape that I know will go across these with a little bit extra left. Now because I don't want it to stick too much I do kind of take off some of the tack on the back of my hand and then I add this tape across all of the dies. You're going to want to get your die cutter set up with the correct plates. For me, I have my Big Shot all ready to go, and I'm going to start by cutting those dies out in that top left corner where I tape them down. Now once I ran those through, I did remove all of the little cutout pieces, and I did save those for later. And then you're going to remove all the dies at once, making sure not to pull too hard and have them fall off the tape, and you're going to place it back down on the cardstock. I like to go at a diagonal, and I do try to keep the candy corn at the same angle. That's kind of what I pay attention to as I move along. Now once that second cut has been made, once again I remove the insides of the dies, move the dies down at an angle, tape them in place, and run it back through. Now on this next one you'll notice I'm going to start up at the top above the line that I just made and the dies hang off a little bit. You'll want to make sure that you run that edge through first because if I tried to turn this and have it run sideways, 
my plates and my dies would not fit through the machine. So just keep that in mind every time that you run it through. Now I continued the same process of die cutting until the whole piece was filled up. Once you have a majority of the piece cut, you can always go back in with single dies if you notice there are areas where there's a lot of white cardstock left. For me, this worked out pretty well the first time. Now we're going to start with some ink blending. For the first step, I will just be blending straight onto the white cardstock and not using the stencil. I chose Wild Dandelion and Tangerine Twist from Gina K Designs and got out a couple coordinating blending brushes from Waffle Flower. I do want an area toward the bottom of the card front that doesn't have any color on it. So I got back out that blue painter's tape. I got out a strip that was wide enough to not only cover the card front, but help hold it down to the grid paper. I took a little bit of tack off, this time with my arm since the piece was so long, and then I taped it to the grid paper using the lines to make sure my blue painter's tape was straight. So I don't accidentally get ink on the wrong side of the tape line. I did bring in a couple sticky notes and I will use these same two for the remainder of the project. Now my colors today were inspired by the candy corn from the ephemera kit that came with this bundle. So I will be doing yellow on the bottom and orange on the top. Now when I start blending, I put the most concentrated area of color closest to the tape line. Once I have good saturation with the yellow, I turn my paper around, move those sticky notes, and start with the orange. Now because the top of the candy corn is white, I once again concentrate the darkest part of the orange near the tape line, and I blend it out so it's as light as possible at the top. I just keep adding ink and blending until I like the saturation, and now it's time to bring in my homemade stencil. I start by adding a hinge at the top so later when I need to move my sticky notes it's easy to do that. Then I add a couple pieces of tape to the lower corners to help hold the stencil in place. Now I'm going to get out those same inks in the same areas and just darken the openings. Once I think I have good saturation on the openings in the stencil, using that hinge I do just lift up the stencil and I did like it. So I moved my sticky notes to the other side of the tape, turned my piece around, and then did the same thing with the yellow color. Once I had both colors down, I carefully removed the stencil from the paper, and I would think that you could probably get one or two more uses out of that, so make sure to hang on to it. Then I pulled the piece of painter's tape around the center, and here's a look at that finished blended piece. Now we'll move on to the stamping. To start, I'm going to be putting the sentiment on the right side of this scrap of white cardstock. I cut this to 4 inches wide by 3 quarters of an inch tall. The sentiment I chose for this card reads, No Tricks, Just Treats, and I will be stamping it with VersaFine Onyx Black. Now like normal, when I set something up in my Misty, I do like to keep it in the lower right hand corner, so if I have to stamp it again, I know exactly where it should go back. For the next step, I am going to keep the Misty out, but I won't be using it for stamping. Instead, I will be using clear blocks and using the Misty for that cushion on it. I set up each of the candies onto its own block, and using the same black ink, I'm going to ink up my lollipop and stamp it in the shaded area. Now because the coordinating die always cuts a piece out that is larger than the actual stamp, this gives you a little wiggle room when you stamp down your images. And these don't have to be perfect, so don't worry about centering them in the area. It's just more about getting close just for a little bit of added interest. I stamped the lollipops, the candy corns, and the little pieces of candy. And you'll notice that to keep my stamping from one color 
from going into maybe the next piece like the lollipop sticks might have been large I did once again use those same sticky notes to help just grab any extra ink my next step was to do a little embossing and die cutting to add some texture to the sentiment piece, I'm gonna use this dots embossing folder and to cut down my yellow mat and my ink blended piece, I'm gonna be using a couple stitched rectangles from my favorite things. Now you'll notice on the ink blended piece, I didn't center the die on that. Instead, I put it toward the bottom so I could have as much yellow showing as possible. Now that all of the pieces are ready, I could start to put the card together. To do this, I added the sentiment strip and my stenciled piece to their yellow mats. Then the sentiment strip got placed across the front of the stenciled piece and I did make sure to cover the white area. Now I intentionally made this a little too long, so I cut off the excess and off screen I got out a top fold card base and I chose one of the ephemera from the bundle to use. This is a great way to add an image to your card without necessarily having to do the coloring. My card front got added to the card base, just centered so there was a white border all the way around. And then for some added dimension, I got out some mini foam dots and added them to the back of my ephemera piece. I made sure to only put on the top and bottom, so when I placed them over the sentiment strip, it still laid flat across there. To finish the card off, I added a trio of white enamel dots to the front and on the inside I used the same three candy images from the front and did a little stamping in the lower corner. And here's a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my own stencil to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.